Hello everyone, welcome to Barry's Book Reviews. This is episode number six. Today I'm reviewing I Hear Your Voice by Kim Young Ha. The Korean title is Noi Moksori Ga Dullo. It was originally published in Korea in 2012 and was translated by Chris Lee. Chris Lee is an author and translator. She wrote a collection of short stories called Drifting House and a novel called How to Be a North Korean. And she would also go on to translate uh, another um, a collection of short stories by Kim Young Ha uh, called Diary of a Murderer. The English translation for I Hear Your Voice was published in 2017 and at the time it was Kim's fourth novel in translation following I Have the Right to Destroy Myself, Your Republic is Calling You and Black Flower. Kim has had a very successful career and is highly acclaimed both at home and internationally. And I Hear Your Voice is a vicious, violent and disturbing trawl through the underbelly of soul in the 1990s and early 2000s. Kim's story of a teenage messiah riding the streets of the South Korean capital on a 150cc motorcycle is populated with homeless kids, schoolgirl prostitutes, violent cops, runaways, drug addicts and biker gangs. Some readers will find the subject matter difficult to stomach. There's child abuse, rape, assault and murder, all featuring prominently and often unflinching detail. Despite or perhaps because of the story's exceedingly grim nature, I Hear Your Voice reveals a writer working at the peak of his powers and displays all of Kim's virtuosic imagination and storytelling gifts. Uh, the narrative is primarily centred on Jay and Dong-gyu, two disaffected teenage delinquents and childhood best friends who share an almost telepathic bond. The novel charts the development of their relationship over the course of two decades and it, it begins in arresting fashion. The story starts with an unnamed teenager giving bloody painful birth to Jay in a bathroom stall in Seoul's express bus terminal, one of the most bustling transport nodes in the city. Then, just as the young mother is about to commit infanticide and suffocate her newborn baby, Mama Pig, the cook at a local, local brothel, sweeps in and saves him. Mama Pig raises Jay as her own, moving him into an apartment owned by a police detective where he meets the similarly aged dong -yu. dong -yu suffers from an anxiety-related condition called functional aphonia, meaning he's mute for the first several years of his life. During this time, Jay and dong -yu develop a preternaturally close connection with Che interpreting dong -yu's thoughts. The two boys are eventually separated when redevelopment spreads through their neighbourhood. dong -yu's father moves him to a new school and house in a middle-class neighbourhood, while Che is left with a drug-addicted and increasingly abusive mama pig in the soon-to-be-demolished neighbourhood of the boy's childhood. From there, the story develops into the narrative of a young, strangely empathic messiah becoming a beacon of light for the disaffected youths living rough on the streets of Seoul or subsisting on low-income jobs. This is a very bleak depiction of the lives of young South Koreans living in the capital. It draws on some of the same uh, Hel Choson ideas that I mentioned in my review of I'll Go On. And Kim wants to show us the lives of these young people who are struggling to get by. There are recurring examples of abuse and neglect and a series of exploitative adults. The social systems that they live within are dysfunctional. And the story is populated by homeless and lo aimless law-breaking kids, many of whom are filled with angst, alienation and are intensely vulnerable. And to these alienated youngsters, Jay becomes a messiah-like figure with an almost supernatural ability to empathize with people or even objects. If a being experiences extreme suffering, I feel it too, he says. As a result, he draws all of these other kids to him, they flock to him, and together they form a, a type of biker gang. As their gang grows, they become a target, 
uh, for a violent policeman. This ultimately leads to an epic showdown in Gwanghwamun and Central Seoul, which I don't want to get into any further. It might sound incredibly bleak, but it is actually immensely enjoyable. Kim is truly an inventive writer. He's steeped in pop culture and plays with the tropes and conventions of different pop culture forms and stories to great effect. Kim is celebrated for being a stylish and inventive writer, and personally, I find his books to be like a literary adrenaline rush. They're often just a blast to read, and this book is a great example of that. Kim draws on a variety of influences from Christopher Nolan movies, Japanese manga, and Herman Hesse, as well as the lives of Jesus, Che Guevara, and Malcolm X, to weave an increasingly spiritual tale. Despite the grimness of the lives depicted, I Hear Your Voice is a starburst of imagination that twists and turns, refusing to be pinned down. It's consistently surprising and ingeniously structured, and I would argue that Kim's novel is a must-read for all fans of Korean literature or anyone interested in depictions of modern soul.